Let's make a custom 3 armor model with a gecko lip. Alright, we found ourselves back in jail once more, and in this tutorial, we're going to be adding the gecko lip armor model. So, this is basically going to be a custom 3D armor model to Minecraft, including, of course, adding the armor. So, once again, you're going to be able to use some of this tutorial if you just want to add a normal armor. However, there are some steps that are different, of course, and this is a gecko lip armor tutorial, so do keep that in mind. Once again, I have a custom block bench file right here where the armor is. It's sort of an amethyst armor. Uh, now, the block bench file will, of course, be available, including the texture and all of the other stuff as well. So, that's going to be available for download in the description below. Do keep in mind, once again, that you need the gecko lip animation utils plugin, so do install that if you don't have it. And in this case, there actually is no animation associated with this armor. It's just a very cool looking armor. However, the animations, you can add those the same way that you have added animations with entities or blocks or items or all of that. So it basically functions the same way. One important thing is that under the model settings, it is set to armor and then you should basically be good to go. Now in your block bench file, when you download this particular file, you will have this and then that's going to be basically fine. As previously done, we want to get the GeoJSON file. We do that by going to file, export, export gecko lib model. And that's going to be the Amethyst Armor GeoJSON file. There you go. Then under the Animate tab, going to Animation, Export Animations, Confirm. That's the Amethyst Armor Animation JSON. Now, in our case, that just has one idle animation that does nothing, but still we need the Animation JSON file exported regardless. And then last but not least, we also want the texture. So just right click on this Save As. And that's going to be the Amethyst underscore Armor PNG. And then we can proceed to IntelliJ once again. So we want to, of course, take the GeoJSON file and put it into our Geo folder. We want to take the animations json file and put that in the animations folder and the texture i'm actually going to put that under textures armor and then we're going to put the png in there and that's going to be fine what we will also need is the actual armor items so that's going to be the boots and all of that so i'm also going to copy those over those pngs are of course also available to you as well now that we have done this let's proceed to add the actual armor itself so for an armor we need a armor material so we can basically do the following you can just press shift twice and look at the armor materials class so it's this one from NetMicroft item, and you can see that it has, well, it's had a bunch of stuff basically in it. And the idea is that it has the leather, chain, iron, gold, so you can see those are all of the different types of armor that are in vanilla. And this is an enum, which is very important, and it also implements the armor material. Those are basically the two things that are important. The string identifiable is less important for us as of right now. The basic idea is that in our own item package, we want to right-click new Java class, and we're going to call this the mod armor materials. And what we're going to do is we're going to change this from a class to an enum. This is extremely important. We want to implement the armor material interface right here. And then we're not going to hover over this or do anything. But what we're going to do is we're going to literally take the netherite. So from above the netherite right here, we want to go all the way down and we want to hold shift and then just click and get all of this in here. And you want to make sure that you copy it correctly, okay? You want to start from the netherite and go right down here and not include the closing curly bracket. This is extremely important. Press Ctrl C to copy and then Ctrl V to paste in. Now we will get a few errors here, but that is absolutely normal because we have to change the name right here from mod armor from armor materials to mod armor materials. Once that is done, all errors should go away if you've copied it correctly. If you still have errors, then you have copied it incorrectly, please do keep in mind that all of the code is of course available to you in the description below in the GitHub repository so you can double check right there. Now we need to make a few changes here. So first of all, we can get rid of this in a map, the same with this one right here. So we just wanted to have util.make. All of the warnings here are fine. Some of this stuff couldn't be written differently and it doesn't quite like the way that it's written, but overall everything here should work totally fine. Now, when it comes to the actual armor, this is it. If you have, if you want to have multiple ones, this is a normal enum, right? So this is just a normal enum. So if you have another one, you separate them with commas and they have to have different names. So you can see, now I have a netherite one. You can see this is one of them, right? So netherite, this is the open parentheses for it. This is the closing parentheses for it. Then a comma, then comes the second one, right? Which Where, where this one is open parentheses, this is the closing parentheses. And the last one is always ended with a semicolon. This is basic stuff. Uh, if you don't understand that, then I definitely recommend taking a look at some more Java, specifically the advanced enums. Now, we want to name this Amethyst and we want to name this Amethyst as well. You can, of course, change all of the things, right? So maybe we want a little less durability for it. Maybe the enchantability is a little bit more, right? Knockback resistance, toughness. We can change all of those numbers. The same with the numbers here in the map. Because what you will see that that is the protection amount. So basically, this is how much protection each of the different armor types is going to give you, right? Boots are going to give 
Durability 3, Leggings 6, Chestplate 8, and Helmets 3. And then there's also Base Durability. This should always be the same. And then that is basically multiplied by this Durability multiplier in the Get Durability. As you can see, Base Durability Get Type times Durability multiplier. So nothing too crazy. So you can, of course, change this however much you would like. Do keep in mind that, once again, the name has to be unique. And that is very important. Now we want to make some items. But before we can make the item, we actually need to make a custom item class. So in our custom package, we're going to make the amethyst armor item and this will extend the armor item class and we're going to deal with this first so we're going to hover over this create constructor matching super and you can see now we have the amethyst armor item constructor in here and that is in theory for the actual armor itself all that we need so we're now going to make the actual items so that's going to be done right here let's just duplicate the animated block that's fine four times and then that's gonna be amethyst underscore helmet let's just copy the name over and let's just change the name so that's gonna be chest plate amethyst chest plate this is gonna be amethyst leggings and the last one is the amethyst boots let's not forget to change the name inside of the register item method as well this is the amethyst underscore helmet and then we can copy the name here again and just change the helmet so this is going to be underscore chest plate and this is going to be underscore leggings and this is going to be underscore boots perfect and then instead of an animated block item this is of course an amethyst armor item now the amethyst armor item takes in three parameters the first one is what we've made before and that is the mod armor materials dot amethyst comma and then we need to supply a type so the type is going to be just type dot helmet and then comma and there you go we can once again just copy this over or you can do it a line by line that is totally fine i'm just going to do this a little bit faster over here and that's going to be okay change the classes and then the types over here as well that's going to be leggings and this is going to be boots once again it's too fast no worries at all all of the code is available in the description below so you can basically double check it in the github repository there as well right now we have our four items and we want to add them to the data gen that is the next thing so in the mod model provider we're literally just going to duplicate the raw citrine four times here and we're just going to say helmet and this is the chest plate and this is the leggings and this is the boots and we can actually immediately just run data gen because in this case the actual item models just point to well the item textures that we have right here and those should be named properly so everything should work exactly fine if you don't have the data gen of course then you need the normal item model json files that are well basically literally just pointed to the textures so nothing too crazy in this case that should be the item model files that we've just added so that's absolutely splendid and that is basically the armor now we've done pretty much nothing with GeckoLib except for the geo and the animations json files but you know that they don't really do anything as of right now if you now wanted to proceed without GeckoLib, right and just have a normal armor that's different basically we always go down to the external libraries all the way to down here 119.4 and so on and so forth in the assets folder minecraft under textures you should find under models, you can see armor, and those are the armor models. So you can see that, for example, iron, right? There are two different layers, and those two layers is what you would need to basically create in order to, well, have your armor also display properly inside of the game. You would want to make the models folder, the armor folder, and then create amethyst underscore layer underscore one and amethyst underscore layer underscore two, and then that should be that. Right now we can proceed with the GeckoLib stuff and that is pretty much just a model and a renderer. So in the client in the client package, we're gonna make a new Java class called the Amethyst Armor Model and another one which is going to be the Amethyst Armor Renderer. There you go. We're of course once again going to start with the model. Now in this case, this will, of course, once again, extends the geo model class, and it's going to have the amethyst armor item in here. Now, this is actually going to throw an error because the armor item right now is not a geo item. So we need this to implement the geo item interface and then hover over this and implement the methods. Now, these are once again, the same methods that we've seen for both the animated item right here and the animated block item. So nothing insane, it is pretty much all the same. We wanna implement the three methods. Now in this case, once again, I will just copy over what is being done here because we have seen this three times or four times now. At this point, it should be pretty much self-explanatory. And the renderer, and this will extend the geo armor renderer. And of course, once again, of amethyst armor item, hover over this, create constructor matching super. We can delete whatever is inside of the renderer here and just make a new 
amethyst armor model there you go we can close that and we can close the model and then in the actual armor item itself well we of course want a few things again the first one is a private final animatable instance cache called cache and this will be equal to a new singleton animatable instance cache right here passing in this then a private final supplier of type object indeed from lang render provider equal to geo item dot make render passing in this in the render provider we can just say this dot render provider in the get animatable instance cache we can just say this dot cache and then I'll once again copy over the register controllers and the predicate because well once again they are pretty much the same that we've seen every time right so the register here is just a controller that basically passes in the predicate and this is the predicate which basically just plays the idle animation on loop now in our case our animation is pretty much empty right it just says hey it's just an idle animation uh, this is actually very important we want to rename this to idle just making sure that this is named idle because it's looking for the name idle right so this and this has to match the block bench file should reflect that but just in case you can double check because otherwise you will get an output in the in the terminal the entire time that is going to say couldn't find idle animation, couldn't find idle animation, couldn't find idle animation. And of course, that's kind of annoying. And I'm also going to copy over the create renderer method because, well, at this point, it, it is pretty much the same than the other item methods. Now, you can see it is a little bit different because we're overriding the get humanoid armor model method right here, right? But we're still creating a new amethyst armor renderer. We're then preparing it for the render. That's actually very important in this case. And then we're returning it. There really isn't anything crazy else going on here. It is pretty much the same idea. So this should be, I mean, self-explanatory in this case. And those are actually all of the steps that we need to take to basically add a armor and an extension, a gecko lip armor to Minecraft. Yet there's one more thing and that is to add it to the item group. I have not forgotten this this time. Not with me. So this is going to be the amethyst boots and then this is going to be the leggings and then the chest plate and then the helmet because why not go the other way around? There you go. So now those are added to the inventory as well. I've also added the translation right here. That's That should be self-explanatory as well. So let's see. Alrighty, we find ourselves in Minecraft and there you go. The armor has been added. So let's put it on and here we go we are missing a texture that is absolutely no worries so we can of course fix that in the amethyst armor model file right but you can see it definitely already is well a custom model uh, but the texture is probably wrong in the identifier and you can see the texture here is called amethyst underscore armor here it's called amethyst underscore armor arm underscore texture so that is probably the reason why so let's go into the game again and see if this fixes it all right we're back in minecraft and there we go the armor works totally fine so this is is exactly what we would expect to see and it might look a little bit weird right so it's like i'm not saying that it's the best looking armor ever however you can definitely say that it is a custom armor right it definitely looks custom uh, i've definitely seen better but uh, regardless of that it is a custom armor and that's pretty freaking cool right but that is how you can add the custom armor with gecko lib thank you so much for watching hope you found this useful and you learned something new and i'll see you all in the next tutorial so yeah